for the rest of the turn of time, we're going to talk about a technique that I think probably brought some of you here, which is called chroma key or green screen. Show the green screen here. We've got uh, hanging on the wall over here. Just a. This is nothing complicated. It's just a green curtain. It happens to be a uh, curtain that we bought specifically for this purpose. Uh, it's hard to find fabric of that color in a fabric store or something because nobody would be caught dead wearing that. Except yesterday. The only time you see that color on people is on St. Patrick's Day. That's why we couldn't do this yesterday. <laughs> Actually had somebody come in while I was setting this up and testing it out. And they walked in front of the green screen and they just disappeared. <laughs> the invisible person. Um, but normally, the reason we use this color is that nobody's likely to wear that color. Also, there aren't that many people that have eyes that color, though occasionally you do find someone who has green eyes, and you know, that can be a problem. The, uh, but it's just a green piece of cloth. We could just as easily just paint the wall that color, except I can't get my boss to let me paint the wall. So how does a green screen vary from like a blue screen, for example, that they use in movies? Right. Well, blue screen is the same technology. It's called chroma key. Again, chroma key is a technology that allows you to just remove a color from a video and make it transparent, that part of the video transparent, so something can show through from below or behind. You can use blue screens as well, but blue is a much more common color uh, for people to wear. A lot of people have blue eyes and so on, so it's not as effective. So almost everybody's gone to green screens, but it's exactly the same technology. When they first started using this technology, George Lucas back in the early 70s when he was shooting Star Wars used blue screens. But you see green more commonly now simply because it's a less commonly encountered color. But there's no, nothing magic about it. As a matter of fact, all the technology we have here will do either green or blue chroma key. And as a matter of fact, in, in many cases, you can use any color as the background. Um, so it just has to be something that's not in the subject that goes in front of the screen. So basically what chroma key or green screen, again, allows us to do is remove a color from a, from a video. If you shoot the video or the object, person, whatever it is, in front of a colored screen, a green screen in this case, you can later on remove that green and replace it with another video or a still image or whatever. So it appears that the person uh, or the object is in front of something that was never there. And that's chroma key in a, in a nutshell. Dave, okay, what's the advantage of using that over, let's say, a stated background where you have like a, I have a bamboo background at home? That I like to use right. Uh, instead of a physical background, you mean? Yes. Because your background here can be anything you want. It can be an image, any image that you can find, a, a photograph, a computer screen, a movie, or any kind of video can be behind you. So your background can literally be anything that you can photograph or video. Okay, that makes sense. And it can just be a textured background. Let's say you get tired of that bamboo and you want to do parquet or something. You can put that behind you. There are two ways to do chroma key. Let's see if we can get something a little more uh, I'll probably be sharing my screen now for a bit. Yeah. So we can, you can relax there for a moment, Michael. Um, one and the simpler way to do it, and the way you can do it home, is called post-production chroma key. And in order to uh, show you that, I'm going to have to show you a little bit about video editing. So I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to be screen sharing here for a little bit. And I'm going to bring up my favorite video editor, which is Camtasia Studio. 
you have to have uh, to do post production chroma key. You have to have a video editor with a what's called a post production keyer or a chroma keyer built into it. Uh, many most higher end video editors, uh, of which Camtasia Studio is a fairly low end one. But from this stage on up, your um, your video editor will have a keyer built into it. Let me shrink that timeline a little bit there. There we go. Um, this is a typical video, what's called a nonlinear or computer-based video editor. It has made video editing so much simpler than the old days when you used to have to do it with tape. Uh, it's, it's put it within the reach of any computer user. To edit video on a nonlinear editor, you first have to have the, the video in the form of a digital video file. And we've talked about a number of ways to get that from smartphones and camcorders and so on already today. And then you have to have some way of getting the media into the video editor. This, this editor is so simple. It's an import media button right in the center top of the screen. And we just find a video. And I put some online for myself here. Oh, darn. It doesn't want to let me in there. That's interesting. I'm going to have to use something. Oh, that's really aggravating. Something's happened to my media server. I'll have to deal with that afterwards. Let's see what I've got in the video uh, folder here that just happens to be here. All right. Well, this is going to throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into my plans. So I need something in front of a video, or in front of a green screen. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know what may have gone wrong there. Just a second. Let me fix this. Ah. Oh, wrong one. Ah! Don't do this to me. It's huh. just like live television. It's live television. You get all the crap. Uh, Live NASCAR, you get all the crashes. Ah, oh, thank goodness. There's some that I moved over here. I'm, I'm saved. Let's just pick a, you can obviously tell which ones are green screen videos. I have no idea what uh, any of this is. Let's just use Paula here. That's Paula. Oops. All right. I'm not going to do that one. We'll try this one and see what it is. All right, that's all there is once you can get to it, to getting a video into the editor. This is a so-called clip bin. Most of them will have that, an area where your video drops in. Then we just put the video on the timeline down here. The timeline is, just as it indicates, uh, as you move to the right, you're going further on in time, from the beginning of the video toward the end of it. And uh, with time graduations along the top to tell you how far you into the you are into the video, we can just put uh, and the video the timeline has tracks, both video and audio tracks that you can put your content onto. And the, putting the content onto the track is generally nothing more than dragging it and dropping it onto the track. And there's a nice short little video. That's good. And let's see. Well, that's not real informative, but it is a video, um, and it's nice and short. We can see down here both the sound and the video. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about video editing at this point. We're going to do a seminar just on video editing later. So. I have here a video shot in front of a green screen. 
point here is to show you how to make this work and how to get something, how to get rid of this green and replace it with something else. Chroma key. Again, post-production chroma key. I, when I was recording, I had no idea what was behind me. It's just a green screen. I might not even know what's eventually going to be behind me. I can, so I don't have to interact with the background at all. I just record myself and then put the background in later, and I can choose whatever the background might be later. I probably have something in mind. I might not. First thing to do is get rid of the green. That is done using a tool called a keyer, again. It's under Visual Properties. And they term it Remove a Color. Now this will be slightly different in different editors, but it's all basically the same idea. I just click Remove a Color, and it says, what color do you want to remove? Well, I can click this little menu here, and I can get an eyedropper that allows me to select the color. I just go over onto the video, and I say, oh, this is the color I want to remove. And bada bing. We, are, we have removed the color. I can adjust the key a little bit with these sliders to correct it some get rid of all the green, and not too much of me. It really helps when you're doing green screen to have decent lighting on the screen, and I did not. This is not the video I intended to use for this demonstration, so I didn't have good lighting on the screen behind me. But here in the room, as you saw earlier, we have it lit evenly because we've, we've got some nice... Um, uh, new bright lighting that everybody on the, in the district got that you just want an even and fairly bright light on the green screen so that it's there are no real dark areas or real light areas. You don't want a lot of folds with dark shadows and things like that. You want it as smooth as possible. That's where painting a wall green is wonderful. It's perfectly smooth. But you can get that with if you if you monkey with it a little bit with a drape like this. Drape, Dave, would that be a flat green paint you would use? Uh, there's actually, uh, the question was what kind of paint would you use? There's actually a purpose-made chroma key paint that's a, yeah, it's a flat matte surface. But it's made specifically for this. You don't need much of it. It's fairly expensive, but you don't need a lot of it. So you just go to Amazon and uh, search for chroma key paint or green screen paint. You can have it in two days. <laughs> You're a Prime member. Um, so I didn't have great lighting here, so the key. Also, I was wearing a shirt that had some green in it. That's a no-no. You want something that is definitely a color that has no green but still getting a reasonable key. Don't look too bad. Let's see what it looks like when it plays. Yeah, there's not a lot of, you notice there's a little artifact there. Oh no, that's the microphone I'm holding. No, there's not a lot of sparkling or anything like that. So we've got a pretty good key here. So there's nothing to it. I mean, it, it, what, it took a whole lot less time to do it than it took to talk about it. I go to uh, the the keyer in the software, wherever that happens to be, in the editor software, and I select color to key out, and bang, it's keyed out. So now how do I put something behind it? Well, that turns out to be even easier. Let me find something here that's already on this computer since somebody's cut me off from my media server. They're going to have some splaining to do. Um, let me go to pictures here and see what I got that's handy. Uh, dee, 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 dee. We just got good thing this has been used a lot. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Sample pictures. Let's oh, use some of that. Yeah. How about a beach? <laughs> Everybody likes a beach. All right, I want to import the beach picture into the clip bin on the editor. That's it. Editors will, video editors will generally take still images as easily as they take videos. 
And now I'm going to uh, put this down on the timeline, but in order to do that, I have to make another video track. Depending on how your editor, that may be a couple of different ways. In this case, all I have to do is bring it down and drop it. And there's my image. Happens to fit the editor quite nicely. Okay, so great. I've got the, the image, but I can't see me anymore. That's because if, if you stack, this is what's called a compositing editor which is a fairly sophisticated nonlinear editor. You, you don't get that capability for less than this. Remember, this piece of software costs $179 if you're an educator or a nonprofit person um, or a nonprofit organization. Um, if you're on a Mac, you're using a PC here. If you're on a Mac, it's actually, you can get the same basic editor for $75. But the reason, of course, that I'm seeing the beach and not me is that the beach is above me in the editor. I can fix that just by dragging things around. Ain't technology wonderful? And there we are. Test, test. Sound check, check, check. Sound check, sound check. Okay, that's not inspiring uh, video, but that's post-production chroma key, and that's all there is to it. And you can do that with the videos rather than photos as well, right? Absolutely. Let's try that. Good question. All we have to do is put a video down here on this track. Let me import another video. Let's see what I've got here. Try that one. This is a cool video, actually. It's much longer than what we had before, so I'm going to have to trim it. Bring it down here underneath. I can trim that off by just going down here. I can split the video. Again, this is not a seminar on video editing, so we can just show you how easy it is to manipulate, though. I don't need this part of the video. I can split the clip by using a, a splitter. Every video editor has a clip splitter. I can click on that and just press the delete key on the keyboard. I've trimmed the video to what I need. And that video also has a notice that the video is a little smaller than mine, but I can fix that by highlighting it. And I can manipulate it. Video editing is so much fun. And this video has sound too. We'll get both the sounds will be mixed. Let's see what it what happens. Test, test. Sound check, 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 sound check, sound check. check. Yeah. There's video behind me. So you can put yourself in a scene where you never were. That's right. And I can even make myself smaller. That, if I'm careful, I can put myself down in the corner. Test, test. Sound check, 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 sound check. check have fun with this. Anybody recognize what that background video is? I don't think we got any computer science folks here. That is an honest to God working copy of Charles Babbage's Difference Engine, the ancestor of modern computers. Anybody who's ever had a data processing course will get chills over that. It's in the Computer Museum in, San, in Palo Alto. California. It cost about a $10 million to make. <laughs> but it's, it's an amazing piece of working history. It's like somebody bringing the apple from the Garden of Eden and putting it on display 
at least for computer types. Okay, anyway, so that's, that is post-production chronopy. It is easy, simple, quick, and your talent, the people who you're actually recording, don't have to worry about any of it. They just get up in front of a green screen and do whatever they're going to do, and you do all this in post-production, in, in editing. And it is so simple and easy to do and so quick. And the results can be truly spectacular. You can literally put your subject in any environment, any background, anywhere in the world you want them to be. Put yourself in a clean office, right? Pardon? Put yourself in a clean office. In a clean <laughs> office, <laughs> right? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I could use, I should do that more often. I should put a green screen behind my chair in my office. You're absolutely right. Some of you have seen videos from me um, know that. Okay, so that's not intended to train you how to do this. It's just to show you what's possible. We can help you with that. We are very happy to do so, either in person or online. We could use the tool that we're using right now to share this with you remotely. Uh, we can use that in a one-on-one -on -one session to show you how to do these things yourself. We can even have you share your screen with us and, and help you do this on your computer with you at home and us here or wherever. So, so. you said you essentially can use this over your lecture, your PowerPoint lecture? Absolutely. You're talking yet, you're that, talking? Is, that is a common, is. indeed, a common sort of thing to do with it. It's Will this Camtasia product still post caption when you're done with this? Yes, final? absolutely. Or you can just upload it to YouTube from here. This will upload directly to YouTube, and you can caption there. Yeah, that could just as easily be a PowerPoint presentation behind it. All righty. Speaking of that, this is, remember said there are two types of chroma key. This is one type. The really fun type of chroma key is called live chroma key. And this is what you see every night when you watch the weather report mm. on TV. Live chroma key allows you to interact in real time with a background. That requires, this door keeps trying to come closed on us. As soon as, oh, Michael's getting our, quieting us down here. Thank you. So I'm going to unshare my screen, because this is not done in the video editor. This, rather, is done uh, in real time. Michael is pointing the camera at the green screen. This is a hair more. I, you get just a hair of an edge there. On the, that's good. So we have nothing but a green background here on our camera. And, whoops. Ah, there it is. My background's gone to sleep. I have to get that back. Okay. Now, now we're seeing a background. And now, Michael, would you walk over in front of the green screen? <coughs> And magic. <laughs> okay, this is an example of what is called Clark's first law. Clark's first law says that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. This is magic. Don't ask me how they do this. But they're, we're doing it using a device called a live keyer, and this is something you will have to come here for, because this is not an inexpensive device, and unless you really get into this. Let's see, can I actually, I think I can show, if I move the camera, I can show the live keyer, yeah. We'll come back to Michael in a second. There's the live keyer. It's just a box with lights on the front and connectors on the back. The magic box. The magic box that costs about 13. This is the cheapest 
live keyer that I know of. It is a standard definition keyer. In other words, it won't do real crisp high resolution video, but it will do something that's perfectly acceptable for instructional use. And it, co it costs about $1,300. You can pay a lot more than that for a keyer. Uh, I'm sure uh, the studio switcher that the folks here at uh, Miramar are putting in will have a keyer built into it, a live keyer built into it. Sometimes it's built into the studio switcher, sometimes it's um, uh, a separate box like this. And you put the input from the camera and the input from your, your background video input, which is coming off a computer in this case, but it could be another could be a DVD player, could be any video source, or, or still image source, could be a camera, whatever, still a camera. And this is what comes out. You just point, you just put your subject in front of the camera, between the camera and the green screen. And the keyer eliminates the green. Let me show you that happening here. Turn off the key. There's the green screen. And there's the key. And anything that I bring up on this screen, Michael can interact with. Let me see here. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hmm. The keyboard just finished, stopped working for some reason. That's a bummer. There we go. When in doubt, just turn it on, turn it off again. Um, let's see here. I have, I think, a PowerPoint presentation, there we go. That's one option. Notice that when the computer screens are converted to NTSC video, they're quite, uh, no, I don't want that, thank you. They're, they're kind of blurry because NTSC video has one half the resolution of VGA video. But for things like a PowerPoint presentation, it really doesn't matter. All right, there's a PowerPoint presentation. And Michael can be presenting the presentation, and then he can move forward. Be prepared to listen. <laughs> this takes practice. <laughs> yeah. And indeed, he can point, he can interact with the background in real time. And for some reason, it's, ah, uh, there we go. Indeed. And I'm doing this, he could be you doing this himself with a little clicker device. So you can interact in real time with your PowerPoint presentation, with yourself in front of it. I think my keyboard is is running out of uh, juice here. I'm just gonna, yeah, it's flashing. Shoot. Yeah, just, uh, huh? The micro. No. Uh, oh, you know, I could. The little kit will you just use? Let me see. What do I? Just for. Oh, that that. Oh, this this would work. Let's see, I had a mouse here somewhere. <laughs> I think it's right in front of you. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can control this thing here. <clears throat> it got tired of waiting for me to get to this part. It ran out of battery. Okay, there we go. I can end the show. Now I can bring up any other kind of... Uh... Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. We've all felt like this from time to time. 
Okay, Michael, let's see. Uh, how's your dying? <laughs> this is Errol Flynn as Custer. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. <laughs> that was good, Michael. I like that. Thank you. Watch out, Leo. Uh, how about a visit? to one of Google's data centers. This is the closest you're ever going to get to one of Google's data centers. This is a still image we keep Michael in. So he's right in the middle of, of gazillions of terabytes of storage that, uh, we use, that we're using right now when we use YouTube and so on. That's where YouTube lives, among all you know, lots of other things. The Google Drive, your Google Docs and stuff like that all live in that data center. Michael can take you on a tour through that. Um, let's see. Oh, this one would be much more fun. Let's put Michael on the beach. Of course, on this side. Yeah, he probably <laughs> wants to be in the on land there. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't much of a beach video. Let's see. I've got a better one here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Ah, <laughs> doesn't that look nice? That's Horseshoe Beach at uh, Horseshoe Cove, I think, at Big Sur. Just some video loop that I pulled up somewhere. So you can key yourself in front of anything and react with and interact with it in real time. So that's live chroma key, and that, of course, that's just a video output that can be recorded. We just recorded it in um, Zoom, and it can also be recorded um, in uh, on our videotape here if I had thought to have it running. So well, we can use tape one at a very affordable cost. And, yes, uh, it just is not going to be live. That's, that's right. It, it, the type one or the post-production chroma key, all you have to have is the green screen. Which you can literally the, record your whole lecture exactly where you want it and just walk into a classroom and play it for your right. students. Exactly. Big exactly. screen. And you can put any background behind you that you want. And if you're talking about, let's say it was a lecture and you were talking about uh, some event in history, you could have that event in history playing back from a movie or something while you were talking about it behind you. I'm reading a book on Waterloo right now. If I wanted to do a lecture on Waterloo in a military history class, I could put the charge, uh, the, uh, the charge of the old guard at Waterloo behind me. And I could see the French infantry advancing up the hill behind me while I'm standing there right in the midst of it. Thank you. Or I do lectures on computer basics. Right. The origination of computers, showing all the way the history going back to the original models, progressing all the way through. Were you here a minute ago when the when the, the Babbage's difference engine was on the screen? I saw that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yes, indeed. You can put yourself in the midst of anything, and you can interact with it. With and you can't. You just can't, with post-production chroma key, interact with it in real time. If you know about where something is going to be on the screen behind you, you can just kind of wave at it <laughs> and fake it. But you can't really interact with it in real time. The, um, uh, but you can just put yourself in a nice place and <laughs> let your students eat their hearts out, especially if they happen to be in a cold climate somewhere. <laughs> and you can make adjustments and so on that will clean up the key and so on. We haven't gone to a lot of trouble to, to dial this in real carefully here. To be continued in the uh, future series. Well, that it, all it is is twiddling some knobs. It's really just not something we're going to take the time for right now. But that's uh, both post-production and live chroma key. And you can do both whenever you wish. You can do the 
post-production chroma key. At home, all you have to do is get that green drape. And believe it or not, you can shoot this with your iPhone, and it works great. The iPhone camera or the good, uh, um, <laughs> the good Android phone camera will give you um, the uh, every bit of the video quality that you need to do this. I'm watching Michael looking at your screen. Is that computer sitting, the laptop sitting right behind you? Dave was turned around. Oh, well, gosh. You can see exactly what he's doing. I'm sorry. I forgot that one didn't turn around. He was going for a full, full on. Indeed. Yeah. That is exactly what that yeah. image is for. So Michael can point out the planes on the deck, or the, uh, the image of the... I forgot I hadn't turned that around. Thank you, Pete. So the way you do live chroma key, of course, is that you have the, the person has the image, the keyed image in front of them on a computer monitor, which we've been seeing, uh, and Michael hasn't been seeing. So now he can really interact with this in real time. He can uh, point out the hotels, and uh, practice doing it. That towards the screen. Towards the screen. Point towards the screen. Yeah, it's this takes practice. What Michael's doing right now takes an unbelievable amount of practice. You should be impressed with your weather person in the evenings because doing this, it's a very unnatural coordination. But everything's mirrored. If you move right, your hand right, it moves to the left on the screen, etc. Not only that, but um, uh, it can be very difficult to maneuver your finger into just the right position. And then I think even when they're facing sideways to show a specific part that's disorienting as well. Screen off to the side too. Yeah. You have a screen off well, to the side. Well, typically you would have a screen off to the side, yeah. You'd have two, one right in front of you yeah. and one off to the side so that no matter which way you face, you can see the, you can see the screen. There's the midway again. We'll get back to that. Cool. This is very interesting. And this is, again, we have all the equipment set up normally to do this. It's in our little studio room. We've got the big green screen on the wall behind you. And you can just come in and be doing this in five minutes. Dave, we have a similar setup over at uh, North City Center, our mm -hmm. campus. Would you be willing to come in there and do a little of course. training session for that? And we can record that and put it up for our of course because we have that resource available for like the lady who was on before she could go to our north city campus as a right. continuing ed instructor she could use it we have a green screen probably a video camera and everything else that she would need camtasia's in there camtasia's there. probably not a live tier but you can certainly do the post-production yeah. chroma key but if you could come over and do a session with that oh absolutely that absolutely and uh, of course uh I, is caitlin are you still with us yeah, I was just uh, probably don't have much longer though. <laughs> I think it's back at yeah, no, we're just about done. Um, the uh, the you all also have a chroma key setup that you just bought for your maker space. Yeah, that's what Barbara was telling me. Yeah, so I'll help you get that set up. That'd be awesome. I appreciate it. It's a slightly different kind of chroma key. It uses a um, a silver screen and a green light. Okay. The background, the green background, and so on. But it works basically the same way, and the editing would be done the same way. And you actually you have some Camtasia Studio licenses, I think, with that as well. Last questions. We are at all. Yeah, we are at noon. I do have one question. I was wondering when you were talking about the video switcher and the different inputs and outputs and such. Um, right. Could you use something like that for, say, like um, on TVs if you're like streaming like an old like say a movie or a game or something you're doing, and you can stream it to your computer? Um, good question. If the computer had a video capture card on it, okay, that's what I was wondering. Or something like that dazzle I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. In that case, yes. Okay, cool. And that would not be especially difficult today. Well, thank you again for letting me sit in. I really appreciate it. Really?
really delighted to have you. Um, here, where I am. There I am. All righty. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching or being here. Remember that you can always get in touch with us at support at sdccdonline, all one word, dot net, or call us at 619-388-7330. We really, there's nothing we enjoy more than working with people on media, instructional media production, and we're always happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Take care and have a great weekend. Thank you, Dave. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.